Welcome everybody to this special live bulletin. It's breaking news and it's something we have to cover. We're going to be talking about this uh, unprecedented thing that's just happened in China during the uh, Communist Party Congress. And uh, we're just going to show you a clip first and then we're going to discuss it. So what you can see here, of course, is um, Emperor Xi Jinping in the middle and seated next to him is the, um, the former President Hu Jintao, which happens which, to which be probably shouldn't use the word president, but it's well, the easiest for people to understand. Yeah, the yeah. leader, former the leader, leader of the Communist Party, uh, one of our favorites. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's play it out and see what happens here. Okay, so as you can see, um, the previous leader, Hu Jintao, was pulled out of his chair and escorted out. We're going to discuss it in more detail, of course, a little later, but I would like you to tell everybody where this happened and what's actually going on here. Yeah, to set the scene, uh, maybe you can bring it back to the beginning of the clip so you can see. This is at the 20th uh, People's Congress, and what that is is basically when the Communist Party of China mm -hmm. uh, comes together and they elect their new leader, Right, mm -hmm. and when I say elect, don't get don't get it in your head that this is some sort of democratic election. This is just the party elite coming together and saying, "Who have we groomed? Who will we select?" Right. Yes. And they also vote on you know internally again on who's going to take certain positions within the party. And it's a huge kind of power ladder struggle. It's when all of the different cliques of the party and there's different cliques of the Communist Party are trying to vie for power or come to agreements on certain things. Right. Do you do you want to see how the voting works in this kind of uh, Party Congress. Do you actually want to see what a vote is like? Can you, can you yeah. tell everyone uh, what they like to call this, by the way? They like to call it a whole process democracy. <laughs> let's see what it looks like. Yeah, let's take a look at the so-called so -called whole process democracy. We'll play this clip for you. All right, here we go. No. So, oh, you want the clap? Okay. So, I mean, so okay. <laughs> so, does anyone oppose this? No. And how many like hundreds of people are sitting there? I know this is a hell of an ad for mayonnaise, by the way. Yeah, mayo, yeah. by the way, means no. Yeah, the, the none means that. none. Okay, yeah. don't have. Yeah. So, you know, how many people uh, vote against? And not a single person out of those hundreds and hundreds of vo so-called voters, you know. So when you have, and the by list. the way, those so-called voters are just Communist Party uh, members yes. and officials. Yes. Public has nothing to do with it. No, no, it's not. This is not like uh, even a trickle down or trickle no. up thing. This isn't a situation where this uh, Zhejiang province decided that this delegate would represent this province, and they'll mm. go do it. No, 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 no. These are all elected by themselves. Yes. Right. But you have to understand that even within this tight knit, ridiculous group of brutal dictators, right? These, this authoritarian government, there are people that want more power than others. This is how power struggles work, right? Yes, yeah. And we're going to get into actually what went down here. But the, the reason that this is so important, that this Hu Jintao removal thing happened, is because 
when the Chinese government decides it's going to do something, it often likes to send a message. It yeah. wants to send a message. And this is what's going on is that the uh, Chinese Communist Party has kept everyone in the dark for so long. They're so opaque that nobody really knows how to read what they'll do. Yeah. It's like a very incestuous group of people yeah. that make very important decisions and they leave the public out of it. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to go back to the whole voting thing, mm -hmm. okay? Not a single person raised their hand to say no for that particular, whatever they were passing at that time. I believe that yeah. was for the um, the new members that will be put into positions. Yeah, and not a single person abstained. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just shows you it's out of fear, Yeah. okay? It's all run out of fear because the person who says no, the person who abstains, stains will then be purged or yes. dealt with that's just how it works uh, in the current system and it's a it's an awful awful system um, and it is all about fear and thuggery and uh, it's all about really mafia style tactics uh, intimidation and currying favor you know politics mm -hmm. in china is messy yeah um and so now we'd like to actually talk about this event that happened with with hu jintao who for those of you who don't know his little clique actually opposes a lot of what Xi Jinping stands mm -hmm. for. Yeah. And he is therefore seen as an adversary to Xi Jinping and his power um, plays within the party. Yeah. So you have a, uh, you have three main groups of, of vying for power within the party. And you probably knew this before, but Deng Xiaoping, the second leader of China, was the guy that came up with the idea with, hey, maybe a leader in the Communist Party should only serve for two terms. Yes. Term limitations will stop people from becoming a dictator like we'll Mao. Stop it stop them from becoming Mao Zedong. It was it without saying it's to prevent Mao. It was basically that's what it meant. Yes. Right. It's so we don't have to go through tens of millions of people starving to death. Correct. And getting murdered. And maybe if we limit that power from another dictator coming into power, then we can prevent a lot of bad things, right? And it's good to mix it up every once in a while. You do need different leadership. You cannot be stuck under the same leader. Otherwise, oh, for sure. You know, things always, always kind of devolve into, yes. a, in a, into a terrible situation. Yeah, so um, that kind of worked. I mean, like the Chinese Communist Party has always been a brutal, really bad human rights record. Mm -hmm. Terrible, terrible government for a lot of things. Mm. But it's been semi-functional because there's always been a, a weird vying for power that keeps it in balance. It's like a very limited checks and balances system yeah. in there. And it was kind of instituted by Deng Xiaoping. Now, Xi Jinping, the current dictator, decided to remove those term limits. Yes. He said, you know what? I'm going to go to the next party congress, which just happened, by the way. Yeah. And I'm going to be up for election for the third term. Yeah. Right. Now, in order to make that a success, you have to first get rid of everyone around you. Well, anyone that would oppose you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, there's people that are too powerful to be to be a like to to remove, like yeah. Jiang Zemin and Hu Jintao, for example. Usually, too, um, too powerful. Yeah, usually too powerful. So what they'll do is they'll purge people in their groups, right? Yeah. So they'll take out here. Hey, you got busted for corruption. Everyone's corrupt, right? Yeah, everyone they always the, have that. Alibi. Everyone in the Communist Party of China is corrupt. That's how that organization functions. Yes. It's about bribery. Yes. You know, it's about who owes who a favor. Yes. We've both seen it firsthand. We've yeah. both worked with the Chinese Communist Party in the past. We've both known government officials. I mean, we've got plenty of proof if you want to see photos, mm -hmm. you know, or anything I, like when that. When you say worked with, yes. I'd like to... Yeah, we, we have to clarify that. Yes, but no, dinner. that's the whole point, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, by drinking with them, you are working with them because sure. that's part of how it works. Sure. You're a foreigner coming in there because you're sitting with a certain official, and it yeah. makes them look good. Yeah. to have a foreigner who can drink for them and yeah. that kind of thing. And we hear that. stuff, you see stuff. Yeah. You know? Anyway, we have to talk about how this actual event has currently been perceived in China and what's being said about it. Okay. Yes. And the first thing that we know about what's happening in China is that it's been completely purged from the news. Yeah. Okay. Now, the official Xinhua, which is uh, the official state media, put out a statement on Twitter saying that Hu Jintao had health issues, and so concerned of it, about his health, they um, helped him out so that he could have a rest in a room on the side. That's the official state media saying that. And then, strangely enough, if you try to search about health issues and Hu Jintao on the Chinese internet, there's nothing. Zero. Not one article, not one post about Hu Jintao's health issues no. can appear anywhere. Where it would be breaking news. Yeah, if it really was an official thing, sure. you would see it in the Chinese internet, and it's gone. Yes. 
We've searched. I've asked my friends in China right now yeah. to search. None of them can find anything oh, about Hu Jintao been, other than the usual stuff that was there like days ago. We've been on on an old day. Yeah. Uh, I started. I mean, pretty early uh, mm. in talking to people about this, and we've watched it just get any like instance about this get scrubbed. Yeah. From the Chinese internet, and then we've also seen something really interesting. Mm. Uh, what have, What did you see? Well, big on, uptick on Twitter. We've seen. Uh, bots, okay, so accounts that were created today or very recently suddenly parroting this line that it's a health problem with Hu Jintao. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Um, we are not going to be speaking in absolutes here because there is entirely a possibility that there is something yeah, wrong with his sure. health and it's entirely possible that he could have been taken out to deal with his health. But we would like to explain to you why we think that this is probably not the case. Yeah, we'd also like to explain to you how the whole structure works so you yeah. can understand why people are running with this theory. Yeah. <laughs> so now, of course, this speculation is going wild uh, on Twitter and in the news overseas. And so the 50 Cent Army has been mobilized to combat this. And how they do that is they create these bots and they attack any thread that's talking about this by saying it's a health issue. Yeah. This is what they normally do. They do a scattershot approach, yeah. and they just need something to counter this, to try yeah. and stop the speculation or to spread some misinformation yes. or whatever the case may be. Yes. So that's what they're doing at the moment, and you're seeing a lot of these uh, accounts suddenly being created and posting that it's a health issue. Yeah. Okay, but like we said, if it really was a health issue, you should see it in the Chinese press. Yeah. Because if that is an official st statement, it would be allowed to be seen, but it's all being scrubbed. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, they don't want any speculation on the Chinese internet. They do not want people in China talking about this at all. Yeah. Right. So there is a reason that people are talking about this like it was something nefarious. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, like you had previously said, uh, Hu Jintao was in the clique called the Tuan Pai or the Communist Youth League. Mm -hmm. And they were more about reform. Yeah. Xi Jinping is also about reform, but only from by his standards, only with his yes men and through his what he his vision is, right? Yeah. So when you look at this situation, you see Hu Jintao, he's not He's resisting, he's by the resisting. way. You can see that he doesn't want to get up. Now, if it was about his health or whatever, he'd probably be very um, welcoming of some help. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He also tries to grab the folder that uh, is in front of Xi Jinping. We, we have an explanation for that as well. We'll tell you in a minute. But you can see. Um, here he is. He really doesn't want to get up. Xi Jinping does not seem concerned at all. And that's that's another thing. If it was about his health, you would expect Xi Jinping to be there to help him up, the previous leader. Yeah. You know, Xi Jinping himself. Yeah, that would look much nicer. Surely he could be like, are you okay, mate? Yeah. You know, I was just sitting there all like, oh, hmm, hmm. get this over with. It's almost like really uncomfortable, like, um, yeah, this is this is what's going to happen, but it's like kind of messy how it happened. Yeah. It's like uncomfortable. Yeah, he's just like, come on, get it over with. See? He's, he's resisting, he's yeah. fighting. He's like, no, I'm He doesn't I'm want to go. They're like, no. They're like, let's come, go. let's go. Look at, okay, so pause right there real quick. You see Li Keqiang right there on the left? Yeah, Li Keqiang is the vice, is the premier of China. So he's the like uh, the vice, vice premier. So he's like he's the kind of like president. a vice president, they're in, vice in, dictator. They're supposed to be in control of things like the economy and where the money goes. Yeah. Um, but he's also, by the way, Hu Jintao, the guy that's being escorted, the previous leader of China, he groomed uh, Li Keqiang. Li Keqiang's yeah. in the Communist Youth League. He's in that clique. Yeah. In uh, almost opposition with Xi Jinping. So yeah. you have Xi Jinping, and then his right hand and left hand man here. Yeah is uh, in the opposing clique, right? Yeah. So you look at, watch watch his face here. He leans in and tells he didn't bring something. Yeah, and he, 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 he pats Li Keqiang on the shoulder. But Li Keqiang looks shocked. Yeah, I think everybody is shocked. There's a, zo a great zoom in photo there after that. No one's looking. No one's looking. Okay, so continue. There's another clip here. So this was uh, this was put out by somebody that did a clear uh, a cleared up version, fast forward version. So when they when they shift him out here, right? Mm -hmm. 
you can see Hu Jintao's face is visibly like distraught. Yes, by the of way. course. Xi Jinping's having a laugh about it, you know. Uh, like, if, like in an awkward way. I mean, I, I think if he really, if it was a health issue, you wouldn't be laughing about it. No. <laughs> you know? Um, Maybe, who knows? Um, also, here, here's another thing before we continue with this. If it was a health issue, mm -hmm. if he did have frail health and he really had the risk of um, having an issue, right? Mm -hmm. Surely he just would not have been dragged in to this meeting. So I was, I was reading some... Uh, so people that follow this kind of stuff, the real yeah. like Politburo, how it works and all this kind of stuff. What would have happened if he was feeling under the weather? Mm -hmm. They would have removed his chair in the beginning. Yes. And they would have, uh, you know, had made some sort of statement like, oh, uh, he's feeling out under the weather or something like this. Yeah. And that would be very easily explained away yes. to the populace. You could say, oh, of course, like he's already kind of under the, he's been under the weather. He's been yeah. recovering from some sort of illness. He's 79 years old. You can you can easily explain it away to the point where it wouldn't even be a rumor anymore. Yes. Right? It's done. It's yeah. nipped in the bud right there, right? But when you have this focused on distraught, no, I'm not leaving. No, I'm not leaving kind of motioning going on. Some shocked, awkward faces. You have uh, a narrative behind it that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. already to people. Then all of a sudden, people start running with this and they're like, wait a minute, something's going on here because... It could be, it could very well be a public display of humiliation to yeah. say, I can do whatever I want from Xi Jinping's mm -hmm. perspective. Well, these kind of um, public displays are orchestrated by dictators around the world. Yes. Saddam Hussein did it. Yes. In the 70s. Right. We had, uh, you know, in North Korea, it happens all the time. Yep. It's always in public. They have to make it public. Yeah. And as you'll find out later in this video, uh, in the past, China has done this too. Yeah. Um, Anyway, let's so get back look at to Li Keqiang's face there. So okay, so pause that right there. This is a half an hour later. Yeah, the guy that escorted Hu Jintao out comes back to whisper something to uh, Xi Jinping. Right. This is exactly a half an hour. Half an hour later. Yeah. yeah. Just in the context. Probably like the problem has well, been taken care of. <laughs> yeah, so. but let's not. Yeah. Let's not, <laughs> of let's not here to speculate. Yeah. 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 Um, we're just trying to make sense of this, and Li Keqiang looks <laughs> like visibly like shook. Yeah, shook, and there's a great photo here, um, as they take him away here, just so you can get a better a better view. Yeah, People are trying to figure out if that is in fact uh, Xi Jinping's bodyguard that is taking Hu Jintao out, which yeah. has a lot of people concerned. And the reason is is that you would use your own bodyguard. Hu Jintao has his own bodyguard, sure, that would be in control of his health and things like that. Mm -hmm. So. Look at Li Keqiang's face here as he gets padded on yeah. the way out. So this is, remember, Hu Jintao, the last leader of China, and the person he groomed, the yep. person that he brought into under his wing, mm -hmm. the, the vice premier here, is uh, Li Keqiang looks very, like, shocked yeah, that this does. is happening. I think everybody was very shocked. You can yeah. see, you know, the reaction from everyone around there, just how shocked they, they actually were that this was happening. Yeah. So it wasn't like, a, oh, yeah, no, he's uh, just taking a rest because he's feeling sick. So you imagine um, the, I mean, because the thing is, like, it's one thing to purge all of your enemies, like, kind of, like, subordinates. Mm -hmm. But this is, you know, if this is true, if this is true, again, could be health. We don't know. But there's so much at stake here that it you have to, we have to talk about it. We have to open the dialogue because it's yeah. getting scrubbed. Yeah. Um, there's so much at stake here because this is the last leader of China. It's the mm -hmm. last leader of the Chinese Communist Party. There's only been Mao. Deng Xiaoping, Jiang Zemin, Hu Jintao, and Xi Jinping. Yeah. There's only been five leaders. Right. This is effectively, if this is true, effectively taking one saying, I've taken, I've taken over past, present, and future mm -hmm. the Chinese Communist Party. Sure. It's, it's a big deal. Yeah, you know, look, the thing is, in, within the Communist Party of China, purging any leader, and not talking about the, the, the top leader, yeah. um, but, you know, anyone that's still very high up, officials that are still considered leaders, of course. Yeah. Um, Purging them has been a common thing that's happened in the Communist Party yeah, in the past, sure. especially in the bad old days of Mao and the Gang of Four and all of that kind of thing, which we'll show you mm -hmm. shortly. But now, what's this uh, list over here? These are the, the new members yeah. of, of the party, the outcome of the Party Congress, right? Yeah. And what you'll notice on this list is that Li Keqiang, so remember, Li mm -hmm. Keqiang, right hand man of Xi Jinping, yeah. but in the opposing clique, right? So always yes. keep that in mind. He's always kind of been at odds with Xi Jinping. Sure. Um, he's the one that tells the truth about the economy. He's the one that tries to go out there and say, hey, there's a lot of poor people. We still, ha we still have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Xi Jinping says, shut up. We've yeah. already taken care of this. Right. right. So at odds, he is not up 
for renewal here. He's been yeah. replaced by all of Xi Jinping's yes men. Yeah. Pretty much the whole party has. Yeah, which is, uh, it, this kind of makes a little bit more sense because Hu Jintao, um, of course, would be looking at this list and not seeing any of, any of his friends on this list. This, the, this is the most important thing, is not the removal of Hu Jintao. It's not any speculation surrounding it. It doesn't even matter if it turns out that he just did actually have a health issue, issue and all this is whatever, because this list is actually what matters. Yeah. It, almost everyone that mattered, mm -hmm. everyone that could oppose Xi Jinping's more tyrannical policies yes. is gone. Yeah, that's good. That's the most important takeaway from this. Yes, yes. Um, so, you know, go through this at your own leisure, obviously. There'll be analysis around this at some point, but uh, this is what's important here. Yeah. Uh, Li Keqiang, as you can see there, he was, uh, this is a, a previous photo, but this is the person that uh, kind of people were holding out for in China, were holding out for his policies to maybe supersede Xi Jinping's policies if Xi Jinping kept failing with things yeah. like zero COVID and actual uh, poverty alleviation efforts. It was, they, people looked to him like the people's dude. He, yeah. was, he was there for the people and he definitely comes off as more approachable and his policies have always been more liberal. Well, he's reports. definitely more honest yes. than Xi Jinping about yes. the state of China and uh, the economy and, and so on and so forth. So, yeah. He's the important person that just got replaced. Yeah, correct. Uh, ba Dio Cao, which is a, a dissident artist in Australia, mm -hmm. he uh, threw this together. It must have been real quick. He's, he's very good impressive. at yeah. very good at releasing things very quickly. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. But it's a Hu Jintao getting removed like a claw machine. Mm -hmm. This is the speculation that's going around is that Xi Jinping's bodyguard there on the left mm -hmm. is the one that removed Hu Jintao, which yeah. again would be a big precedent because Hu Jintao has his own entourage. Sure. He has his own bodyguards, he has his own doctors, he has his own stuff. Yeah. Right? Why would you be removed by the bodyguard of the current dictator? I also no. find it uh, the the whole point that he was resisting in the beginning and yeah. also throughout the removal, he was resisting. He didn't want to leave. Yeah. I mean, people will say dementia or whatever. Mm. I mean, if you if you do have failing health and there's an emergency and you need to be taken out, that's understandable. But then it would be, you know, it would look like it was a health emergency, not a hey, hey Gramps, you gotta get out of here. You know? It's a different it's a different vibe. It's a different feeling. Yeah. The claw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So now we have to yeah. talk about why, um, again, this kind of public display is quite common. Uh, within, if this is what that is. Yeah, <laughs> and again, we have to leave the doors open here. Sure. If it is a health thing, it's a health thing. If it's not, which is what we are leaning towards, not saying for definite, but if it is, um, it wouldn't be anything new. Yes. All right. And we look at some very old footage here. Not very old, actually. You know, this is from within our parents' lifetimes. Um, we take a look, sorry. It's old Mao Zedong. When he decided to get rid of officials, doesn't matter who they were, they would be publicly humiliated and publicly purged. Mm -hmm. All right. And then executed. Yeah, obviously, back then they would just execute them or yeah. whatever they did with them, you know. But um, it's always a public display because you have to have a public display of power yes. in these kind of um, uh, institutions like the Communist Party of China. And the reason is that removing him in front of all of the other top ministers and all the other top officials there in that room sends a clear message to everybody there that nobody is safe. And you better stick by what Xi Jinping says and does, because if you don't, this could be you. Yeah, because here's the deal. In the, the Cong party Congress, they have pri a private meeting, yeah. right? If a purge was to happen, it could have happened behind closed doors. Yes. So public displays are really important. I mean, this stuff is manicured from the beginning, yeah. right? Anything that you see is orchestrated to, to a T. Yeah. So this kind of weird removal, like kind of like, I don't want to leave type of thing. And with all this kind of weird vibes around the whole Congress, is not it's just not normal. It's no. not normal at all. Um, no. When I was speaking to some Chinese people that saw this, mm -hmm. um, the consensus was if, you know, you basically, you stupid foreigners, if you think that it's a health issue, that's why he's removed, then you don't know enough about China because sure. the body language, why this would have happened, all of the people's positions leading up to this and who they're involved with, and then choosing to do that in a public event and then removing the news afterwards because yeah. it's supposed to be a basically a display to show the people in the communist party who's boss yeah it like made so much sense to the point where these people are like there's nothing to question here right so right. I'm, I'm showing you both sides sure right uh we'll never take a side 
unless there's some sort of fi- in, like finite proof. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, I think both sides need to be looked at. Absolutely. For sure. Um, so I wanted to. Uh, what's the next slide here? Well, you know, we After just we see this bad old you know, days that are coming back. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. So I wanted to show you guys. I put together a um, kind of the, the way the party structure works and why Xi Jinping's clique or mm. gang, we can call it, mm-hmm. um, is opposed to the other two, right? right? And why he might want to remove, you know, people from power. I think this will really set the stage if you hadn't haven't seen this already. Really make you un- help you understand how this works. Yeah. Right? So let's take a quick look yeah. at this clip. All right. Oh, Mao was the first leader of communist China. Well, the guy that came after him. Deng Xiaoping, he came up with this idea that maybe some variety and opinion and some infighting within the Communist Party would actually be a good idea. Not to democratize China, but to open up the economy a little bit and let people within the inner circle of the Communist Party of China to disagree with each other and maybe balance each other out. No one wanted another Mao. I mean, this dude's policies killed like 30 to 50 million people. Now, Deng Xiaoping was no hero, <clears throat> but the next dude comes around, Jiang Zemin. Beijing are too young, too, too simple, huh? sometimes naive. This dude was very much pro-market. This is when China really started to blow up. Yeah, it was the Communist Party of China, and yeah, there were still massive crackdowns on things like religion and other restrictions on minorities were put into place, but compared to Mao's China, This was the time to make money and celebrate. The whole gray area of China, you know, dictatorship and brutal tyrannical one-party state on paper, but pretty free market, free for all in real life. This became the norm. This is the China you probably know about. This is modern China. This is also when Western companies started to go all in and hedging their bets on the country. Exciting times. Now, what you need to remember here is that Jiang Zemin formed, at that time, something called the Shanghai Gang. This clique became immensely powerful. You see, Shanghai has always been the most liberal of Chinese cities. Money, money, money first, government regulation comes second. But the issue is that they pretty much only focused on the coastal cities in eastern China, which left the poor people in the interior to not experience much growth. Now, remember that thing that Deng Xiaoping, the second leader of Communist China, did, where he said it might be a good idea to allow some competition within the party? Well, enter who? 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 Hu Jintao. I lived in China under this dude. Like Jiang Zemin, he was also pretty open to some reform, but his gang was called the Communist Party Youth League. That gang was at odds with the Shanghai gang, led by Jiang Zemin. Why? Well, they were all about spreading some of that wealth into the interior, into the farmers and poor people. Let's share. No. Let's get rich. There was an idea that the Shanghai gang and the Youth League gang could actually balance each other out. You got decadence and investment and market values from the Shanghai gang balanced out with the more socialist principles and reform-minded elements of the Communist Youth League gang. In fact, within the party, Although they had different goals, they often worked together, and this made a pretty mild Chinese government. People were, by and large, able to do what they wanted as long as they didn't speak out against the government. The government had this weirdly functional system of checks and balances because this internal strife was actually encouraged. Then came Xi Jinping. Believe it or not, Xi Jinping was actually in the pro-market Shanghai gang, but really only in name. Xi Jinping bucked the system. That delicate balance, that infighting, that internal strife that made the Chinese government a semi-tolerable force, he quickly dissolved that. Xi Jinping destroyed both factions, both the Shanghai gang and the Youth League gang. Bye-bye. Instead of this fairly functional entity that allowed China to prosper, Xi Jinping made his own gang and filled it with his friends, with little rhyme or reason, other than that he wanted yes-men. Gone was the balance, and a new Mao was born. For God's sakes, he even brought back the little cult book that Mao used to use, except now, it's the Xi Jinping Little Red Book. He encourages people to study 15 minutes per day. I kid you not.
So what does this have to do with anything? Well, in the process of purging millions of members within the Chinese Communist Party, under the guise of anti-corruption, Xi Jinping created a monolith of a gang. So, um, yeah, that gives you a little bit of a backstory. Hopefully you can understand what's yeah. going on here. Well, actually, I just want to explain something. So, you know, mm. that when I put this together, it was about how he was purging the Shanghai clique. So he mm. used to be in the Shanghai clique. Right. Remember, there's the Xi Jinping clique, the Shanghai clique, and the Communist Youth League clique, right? Yeah. He was in the Shanghai clique. In fact, the Communist Youth League and the Shanghai clique came together and groomed him. They're like, he's safe. Don't, sure. He, he won't do anything bad. He was kind of like... <laughs> they were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> they were very wrong. And then wrong. he made his own purge and gang, right? Yeah. So the thing is that he was in the Shanghai clique uh, in the beginning, and he was actually buddy-buddy with all those people. Mm -hmm. But when he was trying to purge and, and create his own gang, the only people he couldn't get rid of were the Shanghai clique in Shanghai. Yeah. And then we saw a massive, massive zero COVID crackdown. Yeah, this is like Shanghai. punishment, really. Yeah. It yeah. was his, because Xi Jinping is the orchestrator of the zero COVID yes. policies. He's the one who is like, okay. He paralyzed Shanghai. Shanghai. Yeah, lock it down. He wanted to show that Shanghai is not a sovereign territory. It's under the complete control of Beijing. Yes. Right? Yeah. He is Beijing, mm -hmm. right? So... What you saw after that, though, was you still have elements in the Communist Youth League, you know, well, that, that mm -hmm. click. You still have people that have huge swaths of power within yes. the, the CCP. And that's why people are running with this theory that why would you physically remove Hu Jintao, one yes. of the biggest elements of the Communist Youth League click, mm -hmm. sitting next to Xi Jinping in the most important meeting in modern day CCP history. Yeah. It's too weird. It is. Right? It's, at least, it's at least too weird not to talk about. Correct. So that that's really what we have for you today is we have the official state narrative so far coming out of China, but only to Western eyes, not to the Chinese eyes. Yeah. Saying, oh, there, he's frail, you know, he's got some health issues. So we had to help him sit in the room on the side for half an hour and now he's feeling better. That's yeah. actually what they said yes. from the official Chinese state media, but only to the rest of the world. Chinese people aren't allowed to talk about this. There is no news about this in the Chinese media at all. Nope. It's all been scrubbed completely. Earlier on, there was a lot of discussion and speculation. In fact, probably about two hours ago, we were still yep. seeing things talked about, but now no more. Yep. We looked again, it's all gone. So the Chinese Communist Party made this a very public spectacle, whatever it was. And they're covering it up in China. And they're basically just blasting out that health thing here. It's, probab it's probably an orchestrated show of Xi Jinping's power to the internal party. Yes. On public display to show how powerful he is. Um, at the very least, it's something weird going on with under the guise of Hu Jintao's health. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely follow up on this. Um, and we noticed some people sent some questions in, in Super Chats. We're actually going to, I've put those in the note. We'll see you guys on Friday with those. Yeah, we we'll will, the of course, the, the China show, which regularly runs every week on Friday, we'll see you there. And by then, hopefully we would have a lot more information about mm -hmm. what's going on. We may have nothing more because Never they know. don't want people talking about this. Never know. But uh, we will see you there and we'll answer your questions and we'll continue to bring you all the news and speculation and, yes. uh, and so facts super that chats. we can. Don't yeah. worry. You will be answered immediately on Friday. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining us for the special uh, breaking news bulletin. And uh, whatever you do, have a great weekend and stay awesome. And uh, let me count myself out here. Five, four, I'll count us out. Three, mm. 